Back here now. Chest compressions now. Miles. It's no use. He's gone. Mutated influenza as an epidemiologist's worst nightmare. I thought the flu mutated every year. It does, slightly. That's why there's a different vaccine every season. In 1918, an outbreak of influenza swept across Europe and the entire planet like wildfire. It's called the Spanish flu. As quickly as it erupted, it stopped. Even the millions of people around the world died from it. Word of its impact was minimal because it happened during World War I. The Spanish flu killed more humans than any other disease of its kind. To this day, they still don't know where it came from. Or where it went. That's why when SARS flared up, the government in Hong Kong called in the cavalry from around the planet. They were scared it was back. Do you think this could be the same disease? We don't know what this is. No other cases have been reported in any other hospital within a 200-mile radius. Natalie, what about the wild antelope that infected the lawyer's hand? Could that be the source of it? I'm not sure yet. The culture from the antelope came back negative for the virus, but positive for brucellosis. What's brucellosis? A bacteria found in animal carcasses. I found the same bacteria in the hand wound. Well, a bacterial infection shouldn't have exacerbated the influenza. Well, Donnie was the last patient to die, and it went through him in less than 48 hours. So that means the incubation period on this thing shorter than we thought. A bad flu strain will kill some people in hours, others in days, others in weeks. So we may never know if the doctor, the lawyer, or the grocer was patient zero. But they're still our best shot at finding out the source. Eva, delve into the lives of these three men. Cast a wide net. I want to see if anything connects them to each other and everyone else in the town. Got it. Miles, monitor the progression of it. Yeah. Natalie, call every lab doing viral research. See if they have anything that can help us. I'll start with the local labs. Dr. Connor, she fell ill this morning. She's burning up. How you feeling? I'm 83. I haven't felt good in 15 years. But today's worse than most. Trent. Yeah? This is Mrs. Price. Do everything you can to make her as comfortable as she can be. Yes, sir. This way, ma'am. She always says I'm a foolish old man. She's right. I should have listened to you and brought her in here yesterday. wife has it. Can the husband be far behind? We gotta find the source of this thing and make sure it never leaves this town. All right, we get a culture and swab the grocer's life. You started a store, I'll go to his house. Find out where he's been. If he stepped foot out of this town, we're screwed. Here. 
flies. Lots of them. It's never good. Kong flu of 97 mutated from chickens. Government had to slaughter over a million of them just to shut it down. Spanish flu also came from fowl. Who's to say this didn't start the same way? Yeah. Let's bag him and chop him to NIH. Fowl's definitely the key word here. Oxygen saturation in Emily's two boys is lower than I'd hoped. And I'm seeing respiratory distress in more patients at this stage than I'd like. Other than that, everything's cool. Come on, I'll show you something that'll make you smile. Over 90% of the people in this town were born in this hospital. Donnie was, and Emily's boys were. And you? Yeah, I spent my first night in this room right here. This little town must have been nice to grow up in. I hated it. In high school, I was so sure I knew more about life than my parents or any of these small town hicks that the day I hit 18, I bolted for the big city and swore I'd never come back. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't wait to get away either. Especially for my dad. He's always preaching his liberal values, but in reality, his whole life was about making money. I just wanted to make a difference. Well, maybe when you grow up, you will. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> so when's the last time you went home? It's been a while. Mm. So what about you? Why'd you come back? Oh, my dad got sick and I came back to see him before he died. He passed away upstairs. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, people who say you can never go back home again? Sure. They're wrong. I spent my whole life running from where I belonged. And it's important that you go. Before it's all gone. With all those shots and vaccines and pills we see on TV, I thought this sort of thing was something of the past. Like the stories of communities getting sick, my mama told me when I was a boy. How's she doing? It's a battle, but she's fighting. You see, Arm. How are you feeling? As useless as tits on a bull hog. Your pulse is just fine. So, is she gonna? I don't know, Stanley. We ain't been apart hardly a day in 67 years. But we're gonna do everything we can to help you make 68. How are they doing? They're starting to cough. You think you can help them? Dr. Connor. Natalie on line one. We're doing everything we can. Connor. Unfortunately, Colonel Sanders has nothing to worry about. The chickens are not the source. Are you sure? Positive. They died of dehydration. No one's been home to care for them. I have tested every experimental antiviral NIH and CDC has against this mutated virus. Nothing works. Nothing kills this thing. We better find something. Emily Harris has started presenting, so is Sheriff Mills. They're not the only ones. Why didn't you tell me you were sick? People have been asking me that my whole life. Yeah. Listen, I'm serious. We were shorthanded. 
I wanted to help while I could. Well, you're done helping. I want you in bed now. Whatever happened to dinner and a movie? <laughs> Come on. You gonna be one of those unruly patients? Maybe. Well, at least take these. More antivirals? Yes, and something that hopefully will make you feel better. I'm gonna be okay, Miles. Yeah. Now go, do your job. You do it well. Miles. War room. We're running out of time and we're back to square one. I think I may have found something that can help. Check this out. I think she's onto something. Okay. I did my own version of an autopsy into the lives of the doctor, the lawyer, and the grocer. Talk to me. I looked at everything. Billing records, workout schedules, itineraries, romantic and professional lives, patterns, habits, vices, everything. And I found one commonality that's very telling. What is it? If their customers couldn't come to their place of business, they'd go to their customers. Talk them through the details. Okay. This map represents our sick little town. These blue dots are homes where people live who are exhibiting symptoms. The yellow lines represent grocery deliveries made by Kenny Tucker during the last month. The green lines are house calls made by Dr. Forrest during the same period. And the red lines are clients the lawyer dropped papers and contracts off to. They went house to house infecting everyone. Mutated viruses direct to you. What's the story with that house up there? That's the only place that all three went in the last month, and they went there frequently. Who owns it? A woman named Michelle Carpenter. Let's go pay her a visit. Can't. She died three weeks ago, but not of the flu. She had brain cancer. People said she was suffering with it for years. But just because she was dying of brain cancer... Doesn't mean she died of brain cancer. We need an exhumation order. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. Where are we going to get one? Judge Henry. You know what time it is? My name's Dr. Stephen Connor from the National Institutes of Health. The NIH. There's a potential epidemic in your neighboring town of Deering. It is vital I get an exhumation order for a woman that needs an autopsy. Can't you wait till morning? It is morning, and four people have already died. Oh, we don't have any protocol. There's no order to sign. I can get you protocol in the morning. But with one phone call, you can order the exhumation tonight. And who would I call? The cemetery manager. His name is John. I already dialed. 